This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hello, world. I hope everybody out there is doing great, having a good day. Um, Josh is going to be up with us a little bit later on, I hope. Um, he needs some downtime, so uh, we'll see if he's going to join us later. Uh, so my son Josh, he's an adult, and he's a genius, and he's autistic. Um, I don't know, I just thought maybe I would talk about some of the dichotomies that happen within him and in our household, and probably um, households all across the world when they're dealing with a kiddo that has autism. Um, with Josh, you know, he can, he's a genius, right? So he can talk to you about stuff like quantum physics, but he can't remember to brush his teeth. Um, he understands sciences in, in every form. He gets it, but he can't remember that and in the morning he's got to change his clothes from what he slept in to, to clothes to wear during, for, for the day. Likewise, you know, he sleeps in the clothes that he wore during the day. <laughs> I know that we've all done that before. We've had, we've had our part, part, partying days or, you know, we've all done that. But it's different because he doesn't, he doesn't think about it. He doesn't realize that maybe he shouldn't sleep in the clothes that he wore all day. Even though that's been something that's he's been reminded of throughout his whole life. So autism spectrum disorder, it's a neurodevelopmental condition. It affects a person's ability to communicate, interact, and behave appropriately with others, especially in social situations. <laughs> as I as I say that out loud, I'm like, huh, that sounds like just about everybody in politics right now, doesn't it? <laughs> ah, it's pretty crazy. Hmm, it's pretty crazy. There's some inappropriate people, um, for sure. But you know, the difference is that um, that Josh doesn't know it. He he does not know it at all. Um, he doesn't have a filter. So the things that he says out loud or the things that the rest of us have been taught, you know, that's, you know, it's not nice or it's inappropriate. Um, you know, so for Josh to be in line at, at a store and for him to announce that the lady in front of us has a huge butt, uh, you know, what do I do with that? You know, because it's true. So I can't necessarily tell him that, you know, you, that, that, that's not okay because it's the truth. So teaching him not to say that out loud is something that, you know, it's kind of difficult. He doesn't get it. Well, she does have a big butt. So it's so that's, you know, it's kind of her issue, right? Um, from his point of view, he's just saying it. She knew she had the big butt before she left the house and she brought it out anyway and put it in line in front of us. So he just acknowledged it and said it out loud for everybody to uh, experience. I don't imagine it felt very good for her. doesn't make me happy that he said that. Yet, it's kind of a weird predicament because it is the truth. So how do I tell him not to do that? It's just one of the things that we deal with on a regular basis. Josh doesn't... <sighs> understand nonverbal communication. So if your facial expression would show, you know, that for the rest of us, maybe it would be clear that we're not happy with what's going on or, or if we're sad or if we're angry um, or if we're happy. If our arms are crossed, um, those, you know, those are social cues that he just doesn't get just had a conversation with him the other day that his dad had told him to do something and at the end of what he had asked him to do his dad said okay 
So Josh said, okay. Well, later on in the day, that thing hadn't been done. His dad explained to him that in, in his mind, when he gave him a responsibility to carry out, and then there, he said, okay, in his mind, Josh was acknowledging that that's what needed to happen. In Josh's world, that okay didn't mean, okay, this is going to happen. It means, okay, you said something. And so, like, this just happened the other day. So we all learned a lesson in that, that that okay doesn't mean anything. Um, there's times right now in, in conversation where I'll say something, I'll explain something very simple, you know, very simple. So, you know, like, um, one of the, one of the things was that when you do your laundry, it's important to stay on top of that. And when, when it, the, the laundry is done in the wash machine, washing machine. You promptly put it in the dryer. And then when it's done in the dryer, you take it out and you fold them or you hang them up. Um, but, but that point of taking them from the wash machine to the dryer, you know, when, it, when he has roommates, they're not really going to be um, accepting of him leaving his clothes in the wash for the whole day, maybe even into the next day. They're not going to be patient with that. And so it's important for him to um, begin to be responsible for those things um, in a timely manner so that his interactions with other people go smoother. And he thanked me for explaining that to him. And I asked him, I said, did that not that's not something that occurs to you that maybe when you start something and it's not finished that that may inconvenience other people and he said he never thought of it before and never realized and it just didn't occur to him that anything that he does would affect other people so those kind of conversations happen every day at our house all the time. Um, and if you've heard of, you know, we, we deal with, we've got to have humor all the time in, in what it is that's going on. Cause otherwise we wouldn't even be able to, you know, <laughs> we'd probably be, I probably would be comatose in the corner somewhere. And so, uh, at any rate, um, there have been some many, many years of, of um, therapies and interventions. We learned early on that Josh could not take what he gained from um, a psychiatrist appointment or psychologist appointment. He couldn't take that and utilize that outside of that conversation. So he had to be taught in real time because he can't bring something up that he learned earlier and recognize that it needs to be applied in the situation right in front of him as it's happening. He doesn't make that connection. He just doesn't see that that's relevant. Uh, there's an, an awful lot of start and stop well, with Josh. So we can help him to get moving on something. He'll say that he's interested, whether it's going to college or you know, getting some training or even something that he really enjoys. And he'll talk about it and we'll do what we can to get things going. We'll make appointments and we'll, you know, fill out the appropriate paperwork and 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 then he just disappears. Like, you know, literally sometimes, but he just, he's not available to communicate his likes and dislikes then. And I mean, it does happen that fast sometimes. Sometimes. 
there's the other aspect of that that's very good that I wish that I could be like this because sometimes when we're having a disagreement and he can leave the room for something, maybe to go get a, a tissue or a drink or something, and he comes back into the room like and like nothing happened. Like nothing, there's just, I don't know how he does it. It's amazing that he doesn't hold on to the grief. He doesn't hold on to being upset. He doesn't hold on to anger if he's feeling anger or, um, you know, it, it just doesn't stick. And I think, man, I want some of that. I want some of that. I, I bet I'd sleep a lot better. <laughs> I bet I'd sleep a lot better. But he does just, he, he just, um, he's like, he's brilliant, and the next second, there's like a vacancy. And um, it makes it very hard to watch, it makes it very hard to help him move forward throughout any given day. There's prompts and, and directions, and then... Uh, a redirect and more prompts and redirect and it's just a constant overseeing of of his life and we didn't think that we'd um yeah uh, didn't didn't think we'd still be doing this Josh is um Josh is 29 He's 29 years old. When he's a kid, so much easier, you know, so much easier to help him out because, um, you know, like he's a little kid and like, you know, moms all across the world, like you just, that's what you do. You take care of your kids. And, uh, you do whatever you have to do. It's easier too because when there's when they're kids, there's all kind of um, um, supports out there, all kinds of supports, and it's wonderful, you know. And the the population as a whole is 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 gaining information about autism, and uh, you know these the, these kids are really getting some wonderful help by some amazing people, and then they turn eighteen. And everything stops. Like there, there's nothing, you know, in place for an adult. There's no place for them to live. There's no place for them to get the... I, I won't say, I mean, life skills. You can get life skills, but then you get into... Um, life skills needs to be something where somebody comes into your home and, you know, teaches your adult those life skills that they need to be successful. Well, the reason that that's um, necessary sometimes is because when you get mom telling the kid something, <laughs> again, like again, all across the world, like, you know, I don't even listen to my mom sometimes, you know, so I get it. I get it. He needs somebody that um, he looks at it at in a different way, you know, to help him to integrate some life skills into his life um, that in his space, um, you know, so that he can be successful. But, you know, there's it, insurance doesn't usually pay for that. Um, and there's voc rehab that would, you know, help to, to, to get through school. But like I just said, Josh will choose something and we all get geared up for it. And then, and then it's gone. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it, it don't, Nobody seems to understand that even doctors that I talk to, they don't understand. They see that this like a pattern oftentimes with with adults with autism. Nobody's explained it to me, though. And I think it's because they don't understand it themselves. Like, why does that happen? Why does that something that they want to do and they've put in the effort to get to a point of, of getting an education or whatever that the thing is. Um, and then, and then all of a sudden it's not no, of no interest to them anymore. It's really hard to get somebody, um, to a place where they can 
well, they'll be okay. Um, to make their own money, to, you know, and it's sometimes it's just not possible. Yeah, it's just not possible. And the and the fear for lots of parents with autistic kids is that what happens when we're not here? You know what what happens then? How or or how are they going to be okay? You know, so I think that's, you know, that's a real um, concern that a lot of us have. Like, what's going to happen to them? So, you know, we're working. We're working on it. We keep plugging away. We we keep on with the with the counseling and with um, all the things that we've been taught to do. And you know, we're just doing the best we can. You know, just don't don't know if it's making a difference or not. But um anyway. Hey, this turned out to be kind of a kind of a bummer podcast, huh? <laughs> ah, I didn't know we were going that direction. But uh listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get off here. I, I think I just thought, you know what, I thought that what I wanted for you to know but what I wanted to share with everyone is that when Josh does these with me, I, I can't be presumptuous and know, say that I know what you hear, you know, or what you feel um, when you listen to these and when you listen to him, you hear his voice. You know, I think he's awesome. I think that he's articulate. I think he's funny. And, um, you know, I, that's true. That That part of him is true. And... I just wanted to let everybody know that I don't know I think it's it's important to see the whole picture that there's another side that we all deal with on a regular basis where you know he's he's awesome and he shows up and his eyes are bright and he's ready to go and then Next thing I know, I'm 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 looking, and he's got this kind of fog over his eyes, you know, where he's just not available, not able to to persevere, to move forward. And it takes an awful lot. It takes a, it's such a group effort to help him to to be successful. And I'm so grateful for his dad and his sister and my parents. Um, you know, he's got some, I, I've got some amazing friends that are there for him too. And, and it's just, it's just wonderful. Um, and I'm grateful and, um, it's, and it's necessary cause we all, it's taken everything we've all got. <laughs> so anyway, with that, let me go see if he's willing to come in here today. So I'm back, and Josh is with me this time. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you're you're doing better and can hang out with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I was wondering about something. Is that um, I did part of this before you came in, mm-hmm. and one of the things that I had talked about is how words mean can mean a variety of things, and how. It's a, it's a, it's a, it doesn't work out well if we assume that the words that we use are words that would mean the same to you. Right. And there's been many times that we have conversations where I'm thinking we're talking about the same thing, and it, right in the middle of the conversation, I realize that you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do I just have this blank, this yeah. glazed look or something? Well, almost um, that, but also sometimes a um, sometimes it's like defeated, mm. and and that that hurts to see that. But when I see that, more often than not, when I ask you how you're feeling, and you'll tell me what it is that we're talking about, and it turns out where I end up saying, no, not at all. I'm not upset with you. You know, so 
So, uh, remember about um, Xander's water bowl? Yeah. Um, so Wait, you, which time? Yeah, which time? So, <laughs> you can tell them about this, dude. I've never seen a cat that's so crazy as Xander. Uh, I actually found out he does it on purpose. Mm-hmm. He stole one of my dice that was on my desk mm-hmm. and dropped it into his water bowl, which is clear across the room. Mm-hmm. He's dropped, uh, uh, what's one of those other things? An outlet on? cover. For a computer? A, oh, a little USB thing. So uh, this cat, Xander, steals stuff and goes and puts it in his water bowl. Well, <laughs> so the other day, mm-hmm. I was in there telling you something. As I was, uh, as I was on my way out, mm-hmm. I looked down at the water bowl and it looked like there was something fuzzy in it. I don't know what it was. It just it clearly wasn't supposed to be there. Right. So I said to you, hey, his water bowl needs to be uh, cleaned out. And when I said that, this is before you and I had talked about it, mm-hmm. I didn't know that he had dumped things in his water bowl all the time. Mm-hmm. But when I said that, I wasn't upset in the least. Mm-hmm. The water bowl itself looked clean. It looked like something was in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. Okay. So therefore, it needed to be cleaned. Yeah. You thought that I was upset with you. Yeah. So, why did you think that I was upset with you? Tone of voice, escalated sound, uh-huh. like decibel levels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it so, just... W- the words that were said. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I was on my way out of your room. Mm-hmm. And I had was just closing the door. So I was in that little room off your room. Yeah. Okay. So I was just closing the door, and as I did, I happened to see the water bowl. Mm-hmm. So I opened the door a little bit and just hollered into you. Yeah. Because you were way across the other room. Yeah. And that's why my voice was... Elevated? Yes. And the words that I said, that the, that the water bowl needs to be cleaned, was... I guess what I'm saying is that it, it, I it, wasn't upset in the least. Right. And so, for you, if a voice is elevated, does it automatically, to you, sound like someone's upset? Not always. Um, I, I tend to... I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. <laughs> um, you can just say it. No, because then it would be very bad sounding. Oh, well. <laughs> um, I get in trouble a lot. Okay. So, uh, it's sometimes difficult for me to hear your elevated voice and not think I'm in trouble. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And one of the things that we that I just discovered, and I think you just discovered in counseling last week, is that we have been having conversations that are not... It's it's almost like I'm having my own conversation and you're having your own conversation. And it sounds like they're the same one, but they're entirely different. So when you say that you're in trouble a lot, I think that doesn't feel the way that I feel that doesn't feel like the way that I perceive that Um, because I think that I think that as as far as us kind of giving you responsibilities each day Mm -hmm. you're doing better with those responsibilities yes and this time i so in the past, you had let his water bowl go for... Yeah. Okay. For too long. Yeah. And I and had... And his litter box. Mm-hmm. And I had said that that's not fair to him. Yes. And said to you that he deserves better and you're his dad, so you've got to, you know, take care of him. Mm-hmm. And so you're saying because... Is it... So here's a question. Mm-hmm. Because of that previous conversation... 
Is that what stuck with you? So you thought that when I was when I just hollered in to say, "Hey, the water bowl needs to be cleaned." Well, also, you could you say again the wording that you used? Uh, I think that I said the water bowl needs to be cleaned. Yes. Think about that phrase and how it can be taken in in different ways. Mm-hmm. You, you're closing the door. You open it up. Holler back in. Mm-hmm. You need to clean your wa- the. You need to clean the water bowl. Mm-hmm. After having these d- the the issue of not cleaning it enough, mm-hmm. it can be perceived very easily as it as me being in trouble for it again. Mm-hmm. But you said my tone of voice. Yes, and that's something that you have learned and are still learning yes that would be a tone of voice and then you then the words that are used Mm -hmm. that's something that you um i think i think you're the one that pointed out to me a long time ago when somebody said the cow jumped over the moon and you said that is feasibly impossible (laughs) so i think you're very literal uh, often, right? Sometimes, so, yes. so the words... I was probably in third grade when I said that. <laughs> probably. But those statements happen often. It's just, you know, that's the one that stuck out with me, I guess. But, <laughs> but I wasn't upset with you. Okay. I could tell that that water bowl had been cleaned recently. And the only thing that I was speaking to was that there was a, something in it that shouldn't be in it. Right. So would it have been better if I did, tell me, if I did what, how? If you specifically were a little bit more specific about what was in the water bowl. Okay. Or, like, because I had cleaned it that morning, Mm -hmm. and that was maybe three hours later, right? Um, Something like pro- that. Yeah, probably. But yeah. I don't. I don't know when you cleaned it. I didn't see that you cleaned I it. But I know that I cleaned it that morning. But, but it looked like it because the water was really clear. But the words that you used did not show that. Okay. So okay. So even though I know. Okay. That so I, you wanted me to. So far, you would. It would have been better, and it will be better in the future mm-hmm. if I'm spe- specific. About what it is that I'm saying. So if I had first come all the way back in the room, gotten close enough to you that I didn't have to holler for you to hear me, Mm -hmm. and said, there's something in Xander's water bowl, that would have been better? Yes. Okay. That would have been a lot better. Even, Even if you had just yelled to me saying... There's some saying what you just said Mm -hmm. that there's something in the water bowl. Okay. Even that would have been better than what you had said, which was you need to clean the clean the water bowl. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, I mean, I had just cleaned it and it I knew it was clean. Mm But apparently Xander had tossed something back into there, so... Right. Right. Okay. Um, another thing that I, that I mentioned earlier was that you have an amazing ability to... If we are having a disagreement or a, a conversation that has upset you, uh, even if it, you know, say it is something, it doesn't have to be anything bigger than about the water bowl, right? Mm-hmm. But if you, if we're, if you leave the room for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and when you leave, you upset. When you come back, and I'm talking, it could be thirty seconds, or it could be, you know, five minutes. But when you come back into where I am. It's as if nothing has has happened. Like, you have moved on completely. This is an amazing, amazing gift, I think, that you have that you don't hold on to. 
what you think, like, like being upset or mm-hmm. being hurt or, right. you know. I think one thing that I am having to learn and have learned a little bit is that I have to, well, going off the terms that you would use, uh, read the crowd. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the sense that now I have to... Yes, I. That's my. That's what I tend to do. What is what you said? But I am having to sometimes force myself to, as I said, read the crowd, so to speak, and realize if it's a good time or not to bring something else up or to ask something else like that. Mm-hmm. So one of because sometimes because so, sometimes you're on the warpath. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I don't disagree with that. What's What's interesting to me is there's been it it, it. it happens often that I'm telling you something and you don't respond, and sometimes you say, "I don't know what I'm supposed to say." Right now, yeah, and then, because I know that I'm supposed to say something to respond in some way, shape, or form, I have no t- clue how to do it. Right, right, and that would, and, you know, in a, such a way that would be appropriate. Right, and and I get it because you're not saying, uh, I don't, I don't even know, like, what do you want from me? That's not what we're talking about. Right, we're talking about you saying. I know that we're having a conversation. I know that I, I, I can. I've learned that I'm expected to participate, but and I don't know and acknowledge. But I don't know how, and I don't know what yeah. it is that is expected of me right now. Right. And what you've gotten really good at, and, and we'll, we'll just leave it on this. Mm-hmm. Um. What you've gotten really good at is that you're verbalizing now that uh, just that. So it used to be that you would sit there and wouldn't know what to do. Now you're verbalizing, I don't know what to do. I'm verbalizing my non-verbalization. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> and and it, there's been times that it really helps me because... I really sometimes don't know that that we're not talking about the same thing and I don't understand well that's one thing but I don't understand when that I don't understand that you are are having a difficult time with me in conversation because you and I talk about just about everything yeah well, we talk often yeah, and and it most in, of the time is pretty cases, easy. Yeah. Well, I was going to say in most cases I'm in trouble, but <laughs> <laughs> I I, w- I don't think so anymore. No, not as much anymore. No, Mm-mm. I'm still in trouble sometimes though. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think because it's. I think that we're figuring out the language better. Yeah. And I think that the reason that you felt like you were in trouble all the time is because we felt like we were having to repeat and, and, and having no action. So something as simple as, could you please clear the dishwasher? And then it wouldn't be done. And then we'd ask again and then it wouldn't be done. Well, I think we're coming to um, a point where we're understanding like we're beginning to speak the same language beginning to and I, yeah. I think I think it's not just that I don't think you being in trouble is the issue what I think is that probably am not as frustrated with you um, and upset with you as I was at one point when I felt like you didn't care. Right. Because now I know 
that you do care. And I can't explain.